restrictions will be eased and the drive for that. Uh, Steve Baker is Conservative MP and Deputy Chairman of the COVID Recovery Group, has an article in today's uh, Daily Telegraph and joins me now. Mr Baker, I know that you, you want lessons to be learnt. I even hate myself saying those expressions uh, about governance. But first, let's just talk about you see a, a desperate need now for this to be the last lockdown. What timetable would you like to hear from the Prime Minister later today? Good morning. Good morning. Well, the timetable is intimately connected to the vaccination rollout. So we now know that we're hitting the top four groups. That's 80 percent. 88 percent of the people who've died previously have been in those top four groups. So that means when they're protected from 8th of March, then it's the onus is on ministers then to really justify any restrictions that remain in place to show that they're proportionate to the harm that COVID can then do. When we get to Easter, we'll have vaccinated about two thirds of groups one to nine. That includes people under the age of 50 who are vulnerable. And of course, at that point, for hospitality, Easter is a very big deal. They're either open or they're not. So we're saying that at Easter, venues, pubs, restaurants, hospitality should be open in a COVID secure way. What do you mean by that, Steve? What's COVID secure? Well, it's the it's the investments that people are familiar with. People who went to restaurants last year, they'll be familiar with what, what happened in restaurants. People wearing masks to move around, perhaps screens between tables. And then come 1st of May, well, we know that uh, the government is promising to have vaccinated groups one to nine by then. So really, we think the starting point must be that all legislative restrictions should come off then. And really, if ministers want to keep restrictions in place. The onus is on them to justify restrictions at that point. And I hope you won't mind me saying the Treasury Committee report today has come out and made some quite strong recommendations in relation to the analysis that government ought to be proposing, including the use of multidisciplinary teams, so that all the costs of lockdown measures are taken into account. And where do schools come in all of this, Steve Baker? Of course, 8th of March. Schools should be back 8th of March, yes. And I think it's common ground to say uh, that the harm to children is very significant if they're out of school. So, of course, uh, children should be back from the 8th of March. The thrust of your piece in today's Daily Telegraph is that when this is all over, there will be inquiries into the government's handling and whatever else. But you've also got concerns about possibly even the libertarian aspects of all of this and the way that the government has regulated it. Well, it's not so much. It's a, there's nothing dogmatic about this. I think what we've all discovered is that at the moment it is possible for the health secretary, by signing a, an instrument which we can't amend when eventually we do vote on it, to just lock us down and to lock us down for months without regular votes. So what I've done is I've worked with Lord Sumption, who's been very good and given me the outline of an act that we need. And what it would do is draw on parts of the current Public Health Act the current Civil Contingencies Act to do three simple things to give us regular votes to allow us to amend the government's proposals and to insist upon proper cost benefit analysis. Taken together, that would do what the, the Treasury Select Committee wanted, give us cross departmental multidisciplinary advice. I think we can dramatically improve public policy and confidence in it. Did this become too draconian lastly over the last months? Oh, look, I don't think we've even begun to understand the sheer scale of the harms we've suffered on all sides in this uh, in this crisis. The, the harms due to coronavirus, the sheer scale of the waiting list for NHS treatment now and the sheer scale of the economic hit and hit to the public finances. I think it's going to be years before we've uh, understood all sides. And there's going to be a very serious scientific conversation to be had about whether the most restrictive so-called non-pharmaceutical interventions really did the good that they were purported to do. How important must, is it that this would be the last lockdown and how much would you and your colleagues fight to ensure that? Well, I think we've all got to be pragmatic and we've all got to cross one bridge at a time. But at the moment, in the short run, the crucial point is, is the vaccination schedule. So we know by the end of April, those groups one to nine will be vaccinated, including those vulnerable under 50s. That means that the, there really is very little justification for any legislative uh, restrictions after that. We'd like to see legislative restrictions removed. And it's really the onus on the government after that uh, to justify what it does. And in the longer run, we really desperately now need a new Public Health Act to make sure government must justify its policies mu really much better in future. Grateful for your time. Thank you. Steve Harper, your Conservative MP for Wickham, your former Brexit Minister, your Deputy Chairman of the CRG, the Covid Recovery Group. Seven